no money. My father was an actor and my mother was a dancer and my father drank alcohol and that stopped him from working. On October 29th, 2024, Hollywood lost one of its most versatile performers when Terry Garr passed away at age 79. From her early days as a background dancer to becoming an Oscar-nominated actress, Gar's journey embodied the quintessential Hollywood dream. Her infectious humor and impeccable timing graced classics like Young Frankenstein and Tootsie, earning her a special place in cinema history. Behind the spotlight, however, lay a 20-year battle with multiple sclerosis that she faced with the same wit and resilience that defined her legendary career. From Elvis to Excellence like. Oh. Terry Gar lit up the screen in the comedy hit Young Frankenstein. Let me say again. Oh, Tim, Tim. She was nominated for an Oscar for her role in Tootsie. Oh. Come on, I'm gonna take you out to dinner, good girl. Really? Yeah, it's about time we start celebrating something. Born into the pulsing heart of show business, Terry Gar's destiny seemed intertwined with entertainment from her first breath. Her father, Eddie Gar, commanded vaudeville stages with his comedic prowess, while her mother, Phyllis Lind, dazzled audiences as one of the original Rockettes at Radio City Music Hall. Despite the glitter and glamour surrounding her childhood, the family faced financial hardships after her father's untimely death when Terry was 11. The young Gar found solace in dance, beginning her training at age 6. Her dedication was remarkable. She would spend hours in studios across Los Angeles, her feet bleeding from endless practice, taking buses across the city to attend the finest dance schools. This early persistence became a defining characteristic for her. By 14, her talent had earned her positions in both the San Francisco and Los Angeles ballet companies. The entertainment industry soon beckoned, and by 1963, Gar found herself in the background of Elvis Presley's musical films. She appeared in nine of the King's movies, including the iconic Viva Las Vegas, where she learned to blend into the background while studying the craft of screen performance. The pivotal moment for her came during her audition for West Side Story in Los Angeles. After being rejected initially, she demonstrated the resourcefulness that became her trademark. The next day, she returned in different clothes, presented herself anew, and won a place in the road company at 16. This clever determination marked the beginning of her transition from dancer to actress. As the 60s progressed, Terry began accumulating small speaking roles in television shows. Her appearances on Batman, Star Trek, and Dr. Kildare helped develop the quirky, endearing screen presence that later captivated audiences. She maintained her dancing career during this period, appearing on Shindig and other music shows, but increasingly focused on developing her acting skills. Throughout these early years, her father's cautionary words about show business lingered in her mind. He had warned his children about the humiliation and uncertainty of the entertainment industry calling it the lowest profession. Yet, rather than deterring her, these words seemed to fuel Gar's determination to succeed on her own terms. She approached her career with a practical mindset, taking any opportunity to learn and grow, whether it meant being a background dancer or delivering a single line on a TV show. This period of her life laid the foundation for her later success, developing the work ethic, timing, and versatility that eventually made her one of Hollywood's most beloved comic actresses breaking through Hollywood's barriers. 1974 marked a turning point in Terry Garr's career when Francis Ford Coppola cast her in The Conversation. Her performance as a mysterious woman caught in a web of surveillance and paranoia showcased her ability to balance drama with subtle humor. The role caught the attention of Hollywood's elite, proving she could hold her own alongside powerhouse actors like Gene Hackman. That same year, Mel Brooks took notice of Garr's unique charm and cast her in what would become one of her most memorable roles, Inga in Young Frankenstein. Her portrayal of the laboratory assistant with an exaggerated German accent demonstrated her impeccable comic timing. The role became legendary, with her performance adding a layer of innocent humor that perfectly complemented Gene Wilder's manic energy. Behind the scenes, she had spent weeks perfecting the accent, transforming what could have been a one-note character into an unforgettable presence. Steven Spielberg recognized her ability to bring depth to seemingly straightforward roles, casting her in Close Encounters of the Third Kind in 1977. As the wife of Richard Dreyfuss's character, she portrayed the confusion and frustration of dealing with an obsessed spouse with remarkable nuance. 
but it was her role in Sidney Pollack's Tootsie in 1982 that earned her an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actress. As Sandy Lester, a struggling actress dealing with the complexities of show business and relationships, Gar created a character that was simultaneously vulnerable and resilient. Her performance resonated with audiences and critics alike, cementing her status as one of Hollywood's most versatile performers. Just be honest with me. Tell me the truth. For once in your life, tell me the truth. Because these stories, they are very demeaning to me. They... No matter how bad the truth is, it doesn't tear you apart inside like dishonesty. Dishonesty. At least it leaves you with some self-respect and some dignity. Okay. I'm not going to lie to you anymore. I'm going to tell you the truth, Sandy. I'm in love with another woman. Ah! What are you saying to me? Beyond her film work, she became a beloved fixture on late-night television, particularly on Late Night with David Letterman. Her quick wit and natural charm made her one of Letterman's favorite guests, appearing numerous times throughout the 80s. Renowned film critic Pauline Kael recognized Gar's unique talent for combining neurotic energy with genuine charm, crafting a new archetype for female comedic performers. Her influence can be seen in the work of later comedic actresses, who learned from her ability to balance vulnerability with strength and humor with heart. Gar's rise to stardom was marked by her ability to turn supporting roles into scene-stealing performances. Fighting Through the Speed Bumps The first signs appeared during the filming of Tootsie in 1983, though at the time no one could have predicted the battle that lay ahead. Terry Gar noticed unusual fatigue and a peculiar tingling in her right foot. These seemingly minor symptoms occasionally caused her to stumble during takes, but like many performers, she pushed through, attributing the issues to the demanding schedule of Hollywood production. For years, Gar navigated a maze of medical consultants while maintaining her career momentum. The symptoms would come and go, creating a pattern of uncertainty that mirrored the unpredictable nature of multiple sclerosis. Despite consulting numerous specialists, definitive answers remained elusive. She kept her health struggles private, fearing the impact a diagnosis might have on her career. The weight of secrecy became increasingly burdensome as her symptoms progressed. After years of speculation in the media, Gar made the courageous decision to go public with her MS diagnosis in 2002. Rather than retreating from the spotlight, she transformed her personal challenge into a platform for advocacy. Her involvement with the National Multiple Sclerosis Society became a defining chapter in her life, using her celebrity status to raise awareness and funds for research. In 2005, she channeled her experiences into a memoir titled Speed Bumps, flooring it through Hollywood. The book offered an unflinching look at her journey from the early days of uncertainty through her eventual diagnosis and adaptation to life with MS. Her characteristic wit remained intact as she detailed her struggles and triumphs, providing hope and inspiration to others facing similar challenges. Called speed bumps because? Well, speed bumps, I was thinking, you know, you're driving along and everything's going fine, then it goes speed bumps. You have to slow down, go over it real slowly, and then you hit the pedal and you keep going. And I just thought it was kind of a nice metaphor for life. Life had more trials in store when Gar suffered a brain aneurysm in 2006. The medical emergency required intensive rehabilitation, but true to form, she approached recovery with determination and humor. Through these challenges, Gar maintained the same spirit that had carried her from chorus lines to Oscar nominations. She adapted her career to accommodate her changing abilities, taking on voice acting roles and making selective appearances that allowed her to continue sharing her talent with audiences. The Last Curtain Call is it something that is passed down from families or is it just random? It's random. It doesn't come from, it just comes that certain people get it, other people don't get it. And they don't know, have, have any idea why? No. And is it any age you can get it? And is it more women than men or any of those sort of things? No, it's not more, more women than men. No, it's e e e equally. So it's just completely random. Mm -hmm. Terry Gar's legacy extends far beyond her filmography, touching multiple facets of entertainment and advocacy. Her unique approach to comedy, blending vulnerability with sharp wit, influenced a generation of performers and reshaped Hollywood's understanding of female comic roles. Gar found fulfillment through motherhood, adopting her daughter Molly in 1993. Despite her brief marriage to contractor John O'Neill, 
It was her relationship with Molly that brought her the greatest joy and purpose. Surrounded by loved ones in her final moments, Gar's passing marked the end of an era in Hollywood. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of Terry Gar? Let us know in the comments section below.